So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another episode of In Pictures, the show where I'm joined by special guests. And today I'm joined by a very special guest. We're here at South Street Studios, um, Punch Studios to record this. Uh, George, behind us, we've got a drum set. But thanks so much for joining me. How are things? Yeah, good. Um, not so good in the winter. I'm looking forward to get some sunshine. But um, yeah, I've been enjoying the season so far, watching Ipswich. And um, yeah, busy with my grandkids and the... F- you know, I've got a num- big uh, a family around me for the last few years living in Ipswich. Yeah, so um, everything's going well and um, and get fingers crossed that um, things will get better as far as Ipswich is concerned at the end of the season and um, get promotion. Indeed, my friend. It's, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. We're going to go through some great pictures of your playing times, but also when you're a manager as well. Yeah. It's, it's going to be great. Looking forward to it. Um, let's start with the first picture. When you first sort of signed for the club, a very young George Burley here. Um, how does sort of move come about, and what's your memories of you know back then when you signed? Yeah, it was. Um, I was very young. I came here. Uh, I was fifteen on the June, and I was. I, I came to Ipswich on virtually the first of July, nineteen seventy-one. Um, football was always my thing at school. Um, you know, lived in a little town in Ayrshire. Um, um, played for the school then played schoolboy international uh, my scout invited us down um, at that time Bobby Robson had just taken over the club I think probably only for about a, six months a year and he had a great scouting network um, who went right over right around Britain and organised trials and then organised players to uh, youngsters to come and have trials at Ipswich and I came in Easter uh, with a few other Scottish boys Played um, a trial here, um, must have did quite well, and then um, Bobby asked me t- to sign. So uh, it was a case of, am I going to leave home? Am I going to stay in Scotland? I think my mum and dad would have liked me to stay for a little bit longer at home. Only been 15, but um, I, th- I think they knew that my mind was made up and they didn't want to stop me, so they agreed to let me come down the, the tender age of 15 um, to Ipswich. Yeah, like I'll get homesick if I'm you know, a couple of miles away from Ipswich, but for you, from all the way from Scotland, that is fantastic. And we've got another picture here of um, the youth team as well. Some notable names in here. You know, what sort of memories bring you back, you know, some of the players here? Yeah, I often say that uh, one of my best memories as a player um, was when I was an apprentice at Ipswich. And um, me and another boy called Kenny Taylor, um, we were the first two Scottish boys ever to come down to Ipswich. Um, so that gave me a pal straight away, um, somebody they knew, somebody that could understand my accent, um, which was quite broad, I suppose you'd say it's still a little bit broad, but it was even broader then, and so so that was that was great. Uh, I wouldn't say it was easy to settle in straight away. We lived in digs, and we you know, and being away from home at such a young age, uh, it was it wasn't easy. But um, you know, be, being at Ipswich, you know, with the manager and the coaches was were, were, were so good to us and really looked after us. And I love playing football and I love training. Um, so that that helped us settle settle in straight away. Okay, and George, let's talk about your debut and just your first few years as a town player. We've got a great picture of you just in action. But um, your debut is uh at Old Trafford against Maynard, marking George Best. Uh, what's your memories of getting told you're gonna be making your debut and everything like that? Well, I mean, we had a, a very successful youth team, yes. uh, and I was fortunate to win Player of the Year for the South East, East Counties, which I think was the first um, Ipswich lad that ever did that. Um, so, so things were going well, and then I think on uh, the Thursday, I think uh, Bobby said, "Come and train with the first team." Uh, so that was a great, um, yeah, great thing for me to do. And then he said, after training, bring your bring your gear because you're going to travel with us to go to Old Trafford and I thought first team 17 year old I thought this is going to be a great experience never envisaged I was going to actually be playing in the team so so on the Friday uh, we trained and we jumped in the coach and uh, Bobby said um, I think you're going to be playing uh, tomorrow um, I don't know if you want to tell anybody or maybe your parents uh, that um, you know, you're going to play so straight away, um, I think I didn't think I had a mobile then, but I got I got on the phone once I get back to my digs to to say to my mum and dad um, that I was going to be playing at Old Trafford, and they were 
they, 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 they thought this was wonderful. Um, but we lived in Scotland, and even to get to Manchester, and this, those days it was about a five, six hour journey. But um, yeah, they said, we're coming, we can't miss it. So in the morning, you know, was quite nervous, whatever. Um, went in the coach, and we stopped in the car park before we were out. And I seen uh, Sir Bobby walking along the bus and to the back where I was sitting uh, for to talk to me. And he says, George, um, where are your parents? And I'm looking out there and I spotted them um, just outside the bus waving to me. I said, they're there, Bobby. So he said, OK. So he got out the bus, walked out, walked straight to them, says, oh, nice to meet you, Mr and Mrs Burley. And there you are, you've got two director's box tickets for the game. So that made me feel a million dollars to, to know that um, Bobby, so Bobby looked, was looking after them. They're going to be up in the director's box. So that was a great, you know, thing for me, and and really, you know, it gave me full of confidence to have a manager like that that's prepared to speak to your your, your family and make sure that they were well looked after for the game. Kenny okay, George, let's talk about the game. Old Trafford, may not a team. George Best. Yeah. Your memories, my friend. Yeah, I don't think it comes any better to make your debut. Uh, Man United had a fantastic team all the way through. And so, you know, George Best is a legend, a legend for everybody connected to football. Still speak about George Best being one of the best ever um, British players ever to play. Um, so it was, you know, a, you know, a really big test for me. I always say I, I did quite well because he only nutmegged me three times. But um, no, I, I think I did well, and and Sir Bobby raved about me after the game. You know, we did get beat. I think it was three 0 but um, I was quite happy with my performance, and Sir Bobby really spoke highly of me, and and that was great. Um, you could never envisage, you know, making your debut. Oh, you know, George Best, Old Trafford. And um, but you know, football's my life, and it was something I, I wanted to do. So I, t- yeah, you know, I thought right. I've now I've played one game. I want to play a lot more, and thankfully, really, you know, after that I was ever present in my time at Ipswich. Uh, but it was a great experience, and and really said so much about Bobby Mo- uh, Robson as a manager. Because yeah. yeah, he of course gave a lot of people debuts. You know, John Walk went on my debut, beat Ian. You know, as many other players, Mick Mills as well. He- you know, what was that like, you know, having so many young, you know, players around just like your age? Fabulous. I, I spoke about my early days at Ipswich and having so many players and, and a manager uh, like Sir Bobby. It, it, I'm not saying it was easy, but it really helped enormously because I went to other club, maybe never made it as a professional football. But uh, that was Bobby's vision. He, he he was thinking, you know, beyond his time, but bringing players from all over the country, bringing young players with excellent coaches, Cyril Lee, Bobby Ferguson, Charlie Woods, were absolutely fabulous. They knew the game inside out, and my training sessions was great, and I really enjoyed them, and 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 that really helped us because end of the day, it's all about improving, and the young players were improving all the time. Uh, because the club uh, gave you your opportunity and worked hard for you to get better. Indeed, because you know, in that period, quarterfinals of the UEFA Cup, semi finalists of the FA Cup. Of course, we'll get on to the FA Cup, but that those first few years, you know, making your debut and you know progressing into the first team is pretty successful. And even third in the league, I think a sixth in the league one year as well. But playing a top, you know, of English football. Yeah, I mean, uh, made my debut seventy three. I think we're a new for cup. Um, we, we we did well, and I think we lost to Leipzig in penalties um, the following season. So yeah, we were playing at the top level, not 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 just staying in the in the f- the first division. Then we were you know pushing my way up, um, finishing in the top six, really from mostly all from seventy two to eighty two. Okay, then George, next picture. Did you in the bath with um, your teammates after the? The win against West Brom in the semi-finals at Highbury to get to the final of the FA Cup. What a cut run it was. Um, you scored in one of the rounds. Um, what's your memories of that cut run and to be in a team that is just going to be an FA Cup final? Yeah, we we had a f- fantastic team. And um, when you look at that season, it was probably with the lowest to be finished um, between 72 and, and 82. So 78 uh, wasn't a great season as far as league position. 
we had a lot of injuries, we had players missing, and we didn't have a big squad. But um, when I look at the cup run, um, we had some great performance. The one game where we struggled a little bit, I think we were away to Bristol Rovers, and we played in the pitch, we were just completely ice, icebound. And I think I remember Robin Turner scoring a late um, equaliser to get a replay, and we won easily in the replay. But, um, you know, when we, when we look at it, we played, you know, really our best football you know, of that season. Um, I think on the quarterfinals against Millwall, I think it was at 6-1, six, six one, yeah. six one, I managed to get a lucky 25-yard top corner goal, <laughs> which doesn't come, come nice for yeah. me. And then, and then I always talk about the semi-final. It was um, one game I'll never forget because it was a very good game against West Brom, end-to-end, Johnny Watt scoring goal, and Brian Talbot getting a cut in his head. And then when the final whistle went, we think, oh, we're going to be at Wembley. And all the way back from London to Ipswich, every bridge was covered with um, Ipswich Town scarves and banners, and it was oh, extraordinary. And then from the whole month... Before the final, the whole town was painted blue and white. Every shop had blue and white in it. So everybody was speaking about it. Everybody was wanting the ticket. Yeah. Everybody thought to get there, FA Cup, never in were history. Yeah. It was you know, a great feeling. And Ipswich were very much, you know, you know, a one club town. Everybody, Epsis, you know, is sort of fanatic. Then they were, they were all talking about football. We're such a successful team over over the years. So everything came together, and to get to Wembley is something that the whole town will never forget. They won't. And let's quickly talk about the celebrations in that dressing room because I'm sure it must have been just amazing. And you guys there and just just having well, it's, you know, yeah. that your day of your life where you're going to be playing at Wembley for the final. Like, what's your memories of just that that day? Yeah, I mean. I probably remember the semi final more than the final, because yeah. uh, you know you're so you know after the final I think we're all exhausted, but the semi final everybody was in such a high, yeah. you know all the way back as I talk about the journey back, yeah, but we you know it wasn't luck it was something we'd been working at to uh, trying to win the league qualifying for Europe trying to win cups we were always involved and with some great players. You know, and you look at Johnny Watt there. You know, he held the record for the amount of goals scored in a European contest uh, competition for, I don't know, for eight to ten years. And that's the whole of Europe. You know, and we had, I think, 14 internationals. And I think Paul Cooper was the only one that right. wasn't international. Who was a D- top, disgrace that is a top, yeah. top keeper and, yeah. and in this day and age he was great great, great with his feet so he would have yeah. went down well yeah. so you look at all the internationals your English ones you get Terry and you get Russell and you've got Paul Mariner and then you'd Kevin Beatty Alan Hunter and you know so so the, over those that years we'd all top players but in 78 it was just strange why we didn't do so well in the league but the cup competition made made the whole the whole season very successful indeed and before we get to the final itself of course there's some great pictures um, of course Roger Osborne Itchwich lad scoring the winning goal of course but let's we've got this great picture here um, the fashion back then a bit of flair <laughs> some some interesting hairdos but some great players in this picture and yeah, yeah, just let's talk about the the fashion. Yeah, I think my youngsters. I mean, uh, when I go to the games today, my grandson always, you know, when we walk walk to them, there's a picture of me with with you know platform shoes and there and long hair and stick on sideboards. So the fashion was different, and yeah. um, you know, I think I've just got rid of my flares actually, because yeah. I, I thought they were going to come back into fashion. Maybe they have, yeah, maybe. but I mean, yeah. It was it was completely different, and um, you know, life was different then. Mm-hmm. You know, life was completely different, and I think it was much more free. You know, if you, I think if you walked around Ipswich High Street and whatever, you would see five or six of the players walking about. Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. You know, so it's completely different, and um, and the football, the fans are back in Ipswich. I remember when we played Leeds United. I think there was, I think there was thirty four thousand, and they're all sitting round the outside of the grounds. <laughs> that would never happen now. So it has fashions changed. You know, attitudes have changed, Ipswich have changed, but you know, but it certainly is a, a right football town. It is indeed. And let's talk about the the special day. We've got a nice picture here. Um, 
with Clyde Woods and, and Giddis as well. You know, you're holding the... I don't know how you got, got that. It's the FA Cup, um, the bottom part of the FA Cup. I'm sure the FA Cup <laughs> somewhere else, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Paul Mannon would probably be having it. Yeah. You wouldn't let it go. Yeah. Bless him. Um, yeah, everybody celebrating around the ground. The fans, of course, didn't leave. What, uh, even when I'm walking through town now, they'll still talk about I was at the FA Cup and it's something and they'll never forget. And those were great memories, and my mum and dad was there, you know, my brother was there, so everybody had their all, all their families there, so it was something, as a player, you'd never forget, you know, the special moment, and you can do ever, but for me, uh, you know, playing-wise, the FA Cup was the, the best moment in my career. And of course, you know, it's different nowadays, but the build-up to the FA Cup, it was a whole day thing, weren't it? Everyone was just yeah. on, watching on TV, because um, I think there's only maybe one of the only live games people can watch, but... You know, it's, it's different build-up. What was the, you know, build-up? Because that picture there before we showed, that was, you know, in the hotel yeah. before the game. Um, what sort of memories, just the build-up to the game, just knowing you're going to be playing at Wembley? Yeah, you just say that, it was, you know, it was different because, I mean, the, the the cameras would come to the tail, yeah. you know, and you're taking pictures of our flares there. <laughs> so, you know, these days it's a bit more private, I think. You don't get them, yeah. you know, coming in at half past 11, watching, watching what, what you're eating for pre-match and things like that. So it was much more open but um, it's, I'm sure it's the same feeling you know to get to Wembley or any cup finals especially FA Cup will be a special moment in any player's career indeed and of course afterwards it's the Cornhill celebrations the open top, um, top bus parade and there's some great pictures here this one here of course Mickey Mills with the Bobby there as well um Good old Paul Marin, got Alan Hunter at the back there, but that must have been great just being on an open top parade and seeing just all in blue in Ipswich. Yeah, I mean, um, I can remember standing in the town hall and looking out and a mass of people, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I say, you know, we, the team's you know, part of the community, yeah. you know, and as, as I say, we were there, we were amongst the fans all week, you know, walking through town and, 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 and going to schools and doing everything. So we are very much a part of that community. And I think the fans felt that, you know, from there. So it was, they were very close to them. And, it, you know, it's not the biggest town in the world, but, you know, it's a town which appreciate the, the you know, the, the footballers and the team. And it was great for them, for us to bring them, them the cup back. And it's something they will never forget and will speak for the rest of their life. I was at Wembley to see our team win and that's very special it is indeed and of course beating Arsenal Roger Osborne the, the hero you know that's, that's the perfect sort of script for, for a football match you know a boyhood you know fan of the club as well and just scoring the goal you know that must have been great for, for your you know, as teammates seeing yeah. you know Roger scored the goal yeah I mean Roger is a sort of typical Suffolk lad he's honest his day long he wots his socks off he doesn't want it to any applaud for what he's doing. He gets on with it, and you can, you know, stick your life on him. You know, so Roger, for him to score the goal, just made it a perfect final. It did indeed. And we've got one more picture of you guys on the open top bus. Um, and David here has got some uh, some specs on. He looks pretty cool there. Is that David Geddes? Yes, it is. Yeah, David Geddes, yeah, he's um, from Carlisle. Yeah. Um, so, and with Steve McCall and Kevin Beatty for Carlisle, and it just shows you all three came through the youth policy coming from Carlisle, and that shows you how we got successful. It wasn't through buying players, it wasn't through a sponsor or, or an owner putting money into the club. It was Sir Bobby and all, all his coaching staff and everybody working together to get success. And that, 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 and I think that's great because I think those days have gone, you know. Yeah. Um, but and not that that day in that period, that's how Sir Bobby got a great side. So it segues now onto you know European success. You know UEFA Cup in eighty one, but we've got a great picture here at the New Camp of all places. I think a hundred thousand people. What was that like playing at New Camp? We got you know this is a team photo before the game. Um, some great names there. But yeah, what's your, what's your memories of this day? Yeah, I mean, we had so many um, great European experiences. And of course, Barca, Barcelona and Nou Camp um, was very special. Um, there's not many teams won there, and we certainly didn't. Yeah. But uh, we we did beat them at home, um, which was great. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the actual stadium... I mean, it's a really, it was a really old stadium. We were amazed by it, but it was so big, yeah. you know. And um, yeah, it was a great experience. And and actually, a bit of new comp, you know, 
we've still got the AstroTurf. Me and a director went to the, the, the stadium and watched the reserves, and they had an AstroTurf outside, and they were the first um, team ever to have an AstroTurf. Oh, wow, yeah. So we, we actually got an AstroTurf, and it's there at Portman Road at the moment, oh, wow. which everybody uses before it. Yeah, cool. So nobody realises we actually did that because Barcelona. And then when I brought it there, the, the players, they didn't like training on it. So we, we got an AstroTurf for the players so they could train any time, but they didn't really like it because they were a bit worried about getting injured. So, but it has been u- very useful because it really helps all the fans. And even my grandsons now train on it on a yes. Thursday night. You know, so it's been very good for the community. But um, Barcelona itself, I remember speaking to Roger, could we put Roger Osborne back and Johan Cruyff? Yeah, I know. And at home, and Harley gave him a kick. Yeah. But Barcelona is a little bit different proposition at home. Yeah. But um, it was a great experience for everybody. And of course, as you said earlier about you know planes, you know mobile. We've got a great pictures here of um, you guys playing cards. But once again, it wasn't you know for flights and just general just you know passing time. You know, you didn't have mobile phones, didn't have like game consoles and stuff. It was cards or just. Just chatting amongst his, yourselves. Yeah, you can imagine the amount of games we played. Yeah, I think um, we won the UEFA Cup. I think Russell Osmond's played about sixty-two games, which is amazing. But every week we were either playing a cup or we were played in Europe, and then we had the league games right the way through. We didn't have the biggest squad, and there's no doubt that uh, we didn't win the league because we yeah. we we've actually had a squad of fourteen, fifteen players. And um, and that was the reality because we didn't have the the economics or the finance to to actually have a big squad. So, but um, you know, it didn't stop us doing very well. But um, so there were so many midweek games. Me, and my, you know, uh, my wife hardly seen as I talk. <laughs> you can imagine the times we were away. But um, that's what we had to do, and it was it was a joy to have because we enjoyed playing games. Indeed, and of course you had to bond as a teammates because you said that amount of games you were on coaches, planes, wherever you were. Um, what was it like just being, it's like it's a band of brothers really, wasn't it? Yeah, we could, had a, a lot of good characters there. Yes. Some of the boys like liked to bet, you know, yeah. Alan and Gatesy and Paul yeah. Cooper, they were always, you know, we, you know we, down to Newmarket and yeah. then we had a lot of jokers used to come and watch us play. They used to give us tips, but none of them used to win. Oh. So that wasn't much cop. No, it wasn't. But um, yeah. We, we we had a lot of big personalities, you know, Paul Mariner and Kevin Beatty. I mean, they don't come any bigger. Or oh, in this picture, he's got, of course, cornrows. So never, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had yeah, big personalities. Yeah. You needed that, and you had the strength of, you know, the Terry Butcher and Russell Osmond and Alan Hunter, you know, Kevin Beatty. Those four centre halves over the years were fantastic. And you think the, the, the late David Johnson and Paul Mariner were international players. Strikers, you know, and there's not many teams get international strikers who who are playing playing in your team. So we had that over the years. Indeed, and sort of to round off your playing career, you know, you've got a great number of appearances, 500. That is just a perfect 11 goals, not too bad, not bad for, for, a, for a left back, right back, you know, <laughs> positions you had to play. But how would you, have got a great picture here just to sort of sum up your career, just you're in action. Um, what's your thoughts on the kits back then as well? Because... I did ask, they did a, did a good job with some of the kits. and yeah. yeah. I think the kits were good, but the shorts were a bit small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was quite skinny in those yeah. days. So, uh, yeah, I, career-wise, I couldn't ask for any more. Um, I had one bad injury, but made my debut at 17. Played 500 games, virtually, throughout. Played with one of the best man- managers ever. Really... With a club that um, brought young players through with great coaching, you know, and and when I look at it, it couldn't have went really any better, and something I could never dream would have happened. So um, yeah, great memories. Hey, and George, some great memories. But let's um, sort of at the end of your career um, with Town anyway. Unfortunately, you missed out on the UEFA Cup final because of an injury. Can you remember much from that injury? And I'm sure missing out on the UEFA Cup final was a shame. I'm sure you were still about, you know, mingling about with the players and stuff, but. I'm sure that was a disappointing moment. Yeah, the injury was um, well, it was a very nasty one. It throws me in the FA Cup. You know, it was one of these things where the balls went over my head and I've jumped and fell back the way onto my leg and and 
I was down there and I got, I mean, I never get treatment. Yeah. I'm a bit different these days, but I never got treatment. Players didn't then. We're just a sponge. Um, just but, a sponge yeah, but I couldn't quite get up. So I got treatment, got up and I thought there's something wrong there. And we had already made my substitution. So I kept on the pitch, you know, and I kept saying to Walkie, stop passing me the ball. <laughs> But I didn't stop him. No. And then, so we finished the game, and you know I was in a lot of pain. So I got treatments. You know, seen a specialist in it, and um, you know started back trying to jog. And every time I jog, I fell over. So I thought, well, there's something here. So I went to. Fortunately, I went to Cambridge because Kevin Beatty had actually went there a few months before and seen who was renowned as one of the best knee surgeons in the world. It was a medical. A surgeon called Mr. David Dandy. So David, you know, looked at my leg, you know, examined it. It can, it was quite wobbly. He said, "Well, I think you've done your crucial ligament, medial ligament, and that, but I'm not sure um, what it is." So he did the operation. Um, four or five. Um, four or five weeks later, um, no, four four or five days later, I get out of hospital. And then it was a case of rehabilitation. Uh, Mr Dandy didn't think I would play football again um, because there hasn't, you know, the operation he did, they hadn't anybody came back from it successfully. Um, the physio believed in it, so every day I had to go to the physio in Cambridge. You know, for months and months, he didn't want me to go to the Ipswich, he wanted to take care of me in Cambridge, so I went there four or five months, I was in plaster, and after eight months, I started playing again, um, which is, you know, a miracle really, and, um, and and really, maybe, I couldn't quite bend my knee, but you, you made up for it, and uh, within a year, I got I got to Spain, the World Cup finals with Scotland, so that, that was fortunate and um, I seen the specialist and I uh, had the right physio and I was quite dedicated I didn't go into the club a lot mm. so that you know so that that, that uh, that's what it was hard then to watch the UFA Cup and whatever but you know I won one thoughts to get fit again thankfully I did and the boys won that so it, it was a hard time but um, thankfully I got through it and um, I played from the next four or five years for extras before I moved Indeed, and sort of just to round off um, those final few years, and unfortunately the team did disband. Of course, Bobby went on to become England manager, of course, which you're never going to turn that down. But how would you sort of reflect on those final years where the, the team was sort of breaking up, going to different clubs and some players retiring and stuff? Yeah, it was always going to be happen. Yeah. happen. I think Bobby left in 82, and that's when the Dutch boys left, and you know, Walkie left, and Gatesy, and then myself. Um, you know, at least six or seven. So it was a different team. Bobby Ferguson took over. I got on really well with Bobby. and um, But I just felt, you know, it, it changed. And it was a time to, you know, look, look to play for different teams when you've been there for 14, 15 years. And, and that's what happened. Teams um, break up. Um, I had my testimonial. I think at that time there was about six or seven testimonials. <laughs> it doesn't happen now. No, it doesn't. It doesn't happen now. So that, that was the way the club was. And, and it was always going to change once um, Sir Bobby left. OK then, George, let's go into your management career at town. Um, getting appointed. You know, that's... It was very rare to see a former player come back. Um, how does the sort of move come about? And we've got a picture here at Portman Road when you got appointed an Arsenal game, getting unveiled. I'm sure town fans are buzzing, really, because I thought you were a young manager. You were at Colchester before that. But I think a former player's coming back. That must have, what, what, what was your memories of that day? Yeah. I how mean, did it come about? Yeah, I mean, it's a dream for me. Uh, being 16 years as a player... 14 years as a player, coming back to manage your club. And I was brought up really at Nipsey's from from a 15-year-old um, lad all the way through. So, yeah, it was a surprise. Uh, the job came available. Ipswich asked me to, to come for an interview. They, they got permission of um, Colchester, so I did. had a couple of interviews and... Um, they they offered me the job, so um, you know, going back to Portman Road and there was a good crowd there. I knew it was going to be, 
difficult because we were bottom of the Premiership, but um, it was certainly wasn't. It was a job that um, I was never going to turn down, um, and it was going to take time to turn turn it around. With any manager, you you got you got your own players in your own your own style of play. And and then you go from there. Yeah, I think um, of course Walkie was still there, coming back for his third spell. That must have been weird having Walkie as a player and now you're the manager. Well, I've always got on great with John, yeah. uh, but I'm sure he felt it strange. But yeah. uh, Walkie is a class act. Yeah, I mean he wasn't a midfield player then. He played at the back. He had a great football brain, but um, nah, you got on with your job and. Um, whether he's a good pal of yours or not, you you got to just make decisions as a manager. Indeed, and sadly that season we did get relegated. But you know it's a hard job for you to come in bottom of the table. Um, some bad results. I'm going to bring it up, of course. The nine nil at Old Trafford. Um, not a great afternoon for 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 you boys. But uh, yeah, what's your bad memories of that day? Yeah, I always believe uh, football's a test of character. Um, on that day, Man United were unbelievable. Yeah which they were, a fantastic yeah. team, and they were going for the league, and goal difference it was a big thing for them. So after they scored two or three, they were never going to stop. Um, so it was a case where you've got to learn from it, you've got to make you stronger. I think um, Sir Alex was quite pleased that I came in, had a, you know, a few words with him, a wee chat, um, and sort of said, you know, keep, keep going, I'm sure you'll learn from that, which I did. Um, but that's it's football's like that, you know. And I can remember beating Man United six 0 at Portman Road, and you know, and all the stars they had. Yeah. So it swings and round roundabouts. We were going to get relegated anyway that year, and it was a case of learning for, from the squad you've got and how you were going to make it better. Indeed, and just like Bobby Robson did. You brought a lot of young players through. You know, Richard Wright. You gave him his Premier League debut. Jamie Scowcroft, um, Richard Naylor. So many young players you brought through. Was that just something you wanted to do straight away when you came manager and you just maybe sort of looked at the youth team and went, got some good players here? No, throughout my management career and the way I was brought up, was if the players you think is good enough, give them a chance. Yeah. And that's what I did. And not just one or two games, because I'm sure Sir Bobby, when I was younger, might have thought, oh, give him a rest, he's only young, but he never did. He kept going and said, well, you maybe made that mistake this game, don't make it the next game, and so you're learning from it. So any of you say Richard Wright, Titus Bramble, Kieran Dyer... Oh, yeah, Kieran Dyer. I forgot about Kieran Dyer. Sorry Dar- about that. Darren Bent, Darren Ambrose, yeah. you know, James Scowcroft, um, loads. But they were good enough. Yeah. So, because like, the co- you hope the coaching's right, they're brought up the right way, and then you, and then you start introducing them with good professionals you know so I learned from you know Alan Hunter and Mickey Mills and which you learn from it so but you you want the right type of player in your team and then you build around it indeed and we, we finished seventh in your first full season in but then let's talk about and let's let's sort of let's bring up um sort of the playoffs but just you know four seasons in a row getting in the playoffs it was just incredible you know the, the way goals and stuff and decisions what was that like as a manager, you know, getting that, that far into the semis and then getting knocked out? As I said previously, a test of character. Yeah. Uh, and to be fair, the fans, they stuck by me. I'm sure they were disappointed. But we were coming from a place where if we didn't get promoted or just missed out, we had to sell players. Yeah. And then I think the fans realised that because we we didn't have a benefactor. We, we we haven't got anybody that's got loads of money putting money into the club. Bobby Robson didn't have that. You know, in fact, I know Ipswich's manager had it. So you had to act accordingly. So we had to maybe sell players like Kieran Dyer and bring other players in, um, and then go from there and 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 keep a nucleus of your team. So we had the same nucleus for three or four years, which I felt was getting stronger, and I had the belief that we we're going to do it at one point, and I think the fans did as well, and it was a case of carrying on, doing the same things, improving players, bringing young players through, through and maybe having to sell a player, but br- bring some good good quality in with um, good... Uh, you know, standards that, that's going to help the young players come through. Definitely. And you made some great signings early doors as well. You know, Matty Holland, we've had, of course, first episode, check that out if you haven't already. Um, but, you know, you, you turned him into the, the skipper. Um, you know, also Tony Mowbray, you know, good old Mogger, Mark Venus, some other great players as well. Um, but what was, you know, Matt Holland like as, as a skipper? 
Yeah, I mean, I can remember going to watch Bournemouth uh, with Charlie Woods and um, the first thing he, he noticed with Matt is honesty, how hard he worked and how much he was a team player. And that stuck out on my also that was the type of player and person we are looking for. And he proves us right and he gets stronger and stronger. Uh, we brought other players in to help, like people like Jim Magilton. Yeah, Jim. Mm. And Jim made Matty a better player because yeah. um, Jim was a great talker. He was very loud. He, he inspired you. He, he he demanded the ball, and Matt learned from that, and he get more involved then, in and and he get more confidence to get on the ball and play. So it was like through, right right through the team, like um, you know Tony Mowbray, great leader, leader for the back, great talker, helped other players around you, and that's what makes a, a good balance of a winning team. Indeed, and let's talk then about the season. We you know you finally did it. The semi-finals, you know, the Bolton game, Marcus Sturt, Marcus Sturt Day, two great goals, um, and then the Jim Jilton night, him scoring the hat trick. What's the memories of those two games? Yeah, I mean, it had everything. <laughs> um, when we're two 0 down away from home, you need somebody who's going to put the ball in the net, and Marcus did that for us. And um, when you look at his goals and the timing of them was fantastic, and that gave us a chance to play to to get to the final at home. And that was never going to be easy, and it was it was an amazing game. Um, I think Sam Allardyce is still talking about the referee now, but when I look at the tapes and that, you know, the, I don't think he made many bad decisions. Although he made penalties for ourselves, but I think they were the right decision. And I think um, for me, Bolton's discipline disappeared, and that's what cost them. And I, and I always believe you need a disciplined team, and I've always had that. And then we eventually got through in a magical night, a night that <laughs> it was extraordinary. But um, the, the experience actually to go through that and get again to, to Wembley um, was the experience the fans are still speaking about. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we had the anniversary a few years back for the 20 year anniversary, of course, and you were part of that great video that um, my colleague Andy Warren did. And um, we've got some other, you know, this is it, the picture I think a lot of people love. You and Martin, Roy Sir, of course, the man who, who scored the goal to make it 4 2, and, you know, Roy Sir, Premiership. What's your memories of that day, just in general? Yeah, um, I mean, as I said, it's a seesaw game with Richard saving the penalty, and then, you know, Getting the lead, and then we 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 got you know three two, and they're thinking, well, what way is it going to go? Are we you know, we're, are we going to hang on here, or can can we you know score a goal? But somebody like Martin Russa is a lad that has got great ability. That you you think, well, if he gets an opportunity, he'll stick it away, and um, he, I think he did that in the semi final as well. Yeah. So as I say, um, quality all through the team. So the the great belief, and I don't think anybody could say that we didn't deserve it uh, to to get to Wembley that season. Definitely, and I think we, it's time now to talk about your very good friend of yours, um, your number two, Dale Roberts. Um, once again, you know what what a great man he was, and I'm sure it's always. I think a successful manager always has a good number two, and Dale Roberts, yeah, take it away. Yeah, Dale came to the the club about six months after me um he was from a place called long horsley in northumberland um he was a big newcastle fan from the northeast and the northeast and scottish are quite you know similar the way we are i mean we got on really well from day one and uh, he was my best pal for years my best man and then um, he he was another who loved his football you know and Dale was a centre half and he was behind sort of Kevin Beatty and Alan Hunter so he was never yeah. going to get you know he played a few games he had a few injuries but he was an honest hard working lad and, and me and him just got on really close and I took him to United as well and then he was with me at Colchester and then he came to Ipswich so he was my right hand man so um, you know it was a big blow for everybody at the club because he was very popular um, he was a big loss to all my family so yeah it was difficult and life has got to go and we're still very friend friendly with his wife and um and family his two boys and Dale you know he was he was respected with the players you know a few you asked Matt Holland what he thought about Dale he, he was hard you know he was, you know he wanted you to 
you know, get stuck in, like through Jordy, you know, he, he says, no holding back. Um, but he was very caring as well. So, yeah, he was a big loss. He was. And, of course, it, one of these pictures here is um, you guys celebrating at Wembley after the final whistle. Y your relief there, I'm sure, is like, we did it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was fourth time, isn't it? Yeah. It was fourth time in the playoffs, got to Wembley, went to the last few minutes before Martin Russo yeah. sealed it. Um, yeah, great moments, um, memories and pictures that uh, we'll never forget. Indeed, and let's talk then about the season that was fifth in the Premier League, manager of the year, George Burley, some great results, Marcus Stewart scoring all the goals, where do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, I think when you go into the Premier League, you're not sure, um, but we had a good squad, how, how much, many players you need to bring in, we didn't have the biggest uh, budget, of course. The only major one, I think, was Herman Haridison. Yeah. Uh, Herman came in, he was a oh, great lad. <laughs> but yeah. Another one, a great character, and enthusiastic, daft as a brush, as Sir Bobby would say, uh, but a great lad. But we, 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 we started, and then we played a few home games, and I remember we were drawing against Arsenal, uh, but the second, third of the game, this season, and we went, wow. We can we can cope this league because we I think we drew but we could have won the game. Um, I think Titus Bramble started that season and was terrific. Um, uh, Scored against Sunderland. Ooh. Did really well, and um, great. I mean, some of the away performances when I think about Leeds United, mm -hmm. um, I think about Everton. You know, and the one main one which I never did as a player was win at Anfield, and then you had Marcus Stewart. You know, running through, putting it in. And you think at 19 goals Marcus scored that year. And um, the performances we had were, were unbelievable. Everybody and their team were on top of the game, where they had lifted themselves for that season. Nobody gave us a chance. Almost finished third, right up to the last game. Finished fourth, fifth for Europe. Um, couldn't have been any better and we still hold the record for finish it would have been the highest finish for any team that's been promoted and we get a lot of applause for the manner we played you know it wasn't a kick and run and it wasn't you know just you know get you know stuck in there it's one of these where we play some great football we 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 really good players all playing as a team and yes yeah, so many great players and as you, as you mentioned you know Titus Bramble you know you gave him a debut as well and there's some other players who gave debuts in the Premier League um, you know the following season unfortunately um, we did get relegated uh, what sort of memories going back to that one I think you know it's just it's just one of those things isn't it yeah I mean I think um, the trouble is when you're finishing fifth you're trying to improve your team and uh, we lost Richard Wright which is a big blow and Richard's career never really recovered from that Um but, um, you know, we brought players in who, who didn't do the job. Um, a few foreign players who was going to take time to settle. Qualifying for Europe didn't help us one iota. Um, any team that's playing in Europe and playing in the Premiership needs a really strong, experienced squad. And we didn't have that uh, as far as quality is concerned. Um, playing in a Sunday, then a Thursday wasn't great. But overall, we, we didn't do enough. If we'd have finished third bottom the first season, people would have said, oh, unlucky. It went, you went to the last game of the season, finished third bottom, you gave it a shot. But because we did so well, fifth, yeah. people were expecting us to be there again, which didn't happen for a number of reasons, which I've just said. Um, but it was one of those things. Is there any regrets of you know signing some of those like you know players like Fanny George? He had a great career, but he, of course he had a few decent appearances for Town. But some high fees were paid for those sort of players. Is there any regrets from that? Yeah, it didn't work out. Yeah. You know, um, I think when we the players were brought in in the first division, I knew really well, and they slot, slotted in a treat. You know, you could name a dozen who did really well. Yeah. The foreign players that we brought in uh, after finishing fifth didn't didn't strengthen us, and and of course their second season I think is always the toughest, and playing in Europe. So there was a few factors there. One was the signing, but there was a few players there found it tougher the second season, and playing in Europe as well was just too much for them. And um, 
and and I think I remember talking to Martin and Neil at Leicester, and they these exactly the same. You know, the European exp- experience is nice to have, but you've got to be really be your best every game in the Premiership if you're not a big club. Indeed. But of course, we do add the Inter Milan game. I know we lost in the, in the second leg, but Alan Armstrong, he's header. That must have been. What's your yeah. memories of that day? Yeah, we did well in Europe. Yeah. Um, I think we we won in Sweden, won in Moscow. Uh, beat Milan at home so yeah. European was very good yeah. we were still in Europe when I left yeah. so um, yeah, I think we qualified for fair play yeah. <laughs> not fair play because you know yeah. Yeah, our, our teams were always disciplined Yes, you know and I always believed that and that came from Sabobi so um, yeah great experiences and um, yeah had a had a great time as a manager. The the the, the final season playing in Europe and and the Premiership was just too much for us. Indeed, and you mentioned Sir Bobby there. You were in the dugout against him when when of course Newcastle came to Port Aaron, of course when you guys. What was that like? Being, you know, your your gaffer right there. You know, and you're going to be getting yeah, against him. Yeah, strange, but it's like you're just saying about Johnny Walks. Yeah. When you, you, the only thing you just concentrate is doing your own job. Yeah. And um, I was very fortunate to have. So Bobby, mainly my manager as a player, um, and he, you know, he he did such a great job for Newcastle, but he didn't get much thanks for it. Um, I still go and play golf for, for his charity over in Portugal, which has raised over a million euros, which is great. Yes. So his, you know, there, but um, uh, I don't think anybody forget the the times in the Europe seventy two to eighty two, and of course Wembley yes. uh, and when I was manager getting promoted and yeah. finishing fifth so you know for for town fans when you look at it you hope it comes again but the, the, those memories will never go away they won't yeah I just said you, you bump into someone in town and they'll talk about it I was there and sort of the final picture here really is just of yourself uh, you know sort of summing up your town career it's harder just doing a few words I, I won't say just doing three words just do it as many words as you want but how would you sum up your management career your playing career at town yeah, just unbelievable. Yeah, my playing career, making my debut at 15, playing 500 games, winning the FA Cup, and play, being in a side, you know, from 72 to 82 that first qualified for Europe. It was a phenomenal experience. And as a manager, taking them back into the Premiership, taking them fifth there, the highest accolade I can get is being manager of the year. Which I succeed, succeeded doing for, for you know, being manager of Ipswich. So, um, yeah, I've done okay. Um, I've, but the most important, I've got my family living here. We were brought up in Ipswich, my daughter, my grandkids. Um, so that's been great as well. So, uh, all in all, I couldn't have wished for any more. And um, I'm very pleased I took that opportunity when I was 15 to come down here. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of town fans are pleased that you did that as well. And, and George, it's been a pleasure. It's been so great to have you. We've been here at the South Street um, Studios, uh, Punch Studios. Thank you very much for Joe and the team for allowing us to be here. We've got drums behind us, and we didn't mention that in the intro. <laughs> Can you play an instrument? No, not really. I mean,. Yeah. Well, I don't, don't even think even at football grounds you play too many instruments. But um, no, I, I'd, I'd rather just stick to football and um, just he, you hope we hear an applaud of Ipswich scoring a goal yes. and um, getting promoted. That's what we want to hear from now on to the end of the season. Indeed, my friend. Well, thanks so much for joining me, George. Thanks, everyone, for watching another edition of In Pictures. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.